<clears throat> Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're happy to kind of dive into Caleb's work and um, talk about elsewhere. So um, with that, um, <clears throat> I guess uh, I'd love to kind of jump right in and get into um, kind of like the premise behind the show, which is, you know, your artist practice and plum well, your plumbing and your um, artistic background. So um, I'd love to kind of, if you can talk to us about how you kind of got into plumbing um, and how that kind of um, helps ground, I guess, your work. Okay. Hello, everyone. Is, can everyone hear me well or microphone? Okay. Um, I guess I'll start with crawl space. In crawl space, I'm using the crawl space, like the foundation of a house like this dusty dark uh, area of a house is like a metaphor for unearthing uh, generational traumas and a lot of aspects of our family and personal life that we like to keep um, kind of hidden um, in thinking about like where how plumbing how plumbing became a part of my life my dad's a plumber I was kind of forced to do plumbing on the weekends uh, from like the early teens on to now where I still uh, participate in plumbing as like a means of supporting myself and kind of the community at large. Um, and it, okay, um, as far as, as well as how like plumbing informs my practice, um, that's a question you asked. I often, you'll see plumbing rather it be like in the use of like plumber's putty or plumber's primer, um, CBBC pipes, copper pipes that I use um, as a reference to the blue collar and my background in plumbing and many of my work, some in a more obvious sense, some more subtle, um, thinking about like primer or glue replacing um, paint or ink pigments in many, in many of the objects present. Um, <clears throat> so I'd kind of love to talk about um, how that um, helps kind of lead you to creating um, the works in crawl space. Uh, in general, in, in general, the thinking about the metaphor of the crawl space as this place where we hide a lot that we don't necessarily want to confront, a lot of the motifs and objects in the work on display are like this horse that has been in my been in my life for say since I was seven years old, or use like all these references of like yard ornaments or like the kitschy decor that was around my house growing up, or um, reference to gospel or the black church and its like transcendental qualities, and thinking about abstraction and, um, and also there's thinking about what is the best way to have those conversations, whether that be through like literal depiction in some of the work like of J. Mon J. McDonald Henry that I have owed to there, like some early works that I grew up with, or should that be in more subtle senses or something that's some more about like the abstract being like shells or a, a paint swatch that were commonplace in like in my house is growing up because we were constantly moving. Um, so pulling from those objects and like kind of taking them out of the peripheral and like making them the subject of the work. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned, um, you know, the work being kind of about processing generational trauma. Um, um, and specifically, when I look at um, the piece behind us, um, which is titled, Whoever You Are, Wherever I May Become, um, for me, it kind of is representational of um, kind of like a memorial of a past like life or a past time. Um, and I'm curious to know, um, in what ways does this piece maybe represent the processing of some of your own generational trauma? Um, <laughs> whoever you are, whoever I may become, is thinking a lot about this, even the idea of being somewhat of like an outcast or like a black sheep within my family being that there wasn't many examples of, of artists or working artists for me growing up in my family or community. 
but then also like feeling othered by them, but then also knowing that like I was nothing without them. Um, and this work is a, g a good example of me processing that because though it's, it has images and teeth and garments, um, from, like old family photographs that have been, been like made into plates for um, lithography that I then use as like a metaphor for generations and separations from people. It also has um, some more of the same like angel motifs or um, a lot of the imagery that then it begins to completely break down as referencing um, like the core from family homes. But this piece was, in thinking about processing, this piece was all about time for me because it was something that was kind of ever present on my wall in my studio in the making of this work. It was something that I tried to make a point to check in with every day, even if it was just a small mark or, um, or adding one image. It's very much so a, a marker of, of time for me in that sense. Um, and it was like a commitment to no matter what, no matter what the finished product looks like, in, in starting it was like, I'm gonna show it. Like it's gonna, it's all about the time spent working on it. I'd love to kind of talk about your, in the artist statement for the show, you also mention um, like reflective shadow work. Um, <clears throat> and within this piece, um, Family Portrait, um, um, there's like literal shadow work with like the kind of um, shadows that are cast from the light and the like, I guess, etching or whatever it is that you've used on the glass. Um, but also within, um, let's see, memory um, consolidation in red with um, the use of blood and kind of thinking about shadow work as like, um, kind of like your own reflective ways of kind of like working through, um, again, trauma or whatever kind of things that may be. Um, so yeah, I'd kind of just love to touch on like the reflective um, shadow work nature of crawl space. Um, starting with the family portrait piece, um, the plexiglass, it's a laser engraving um, of images from J. McDonald Henry, uh, once again, this present in those prints. And I refer back to her because I think that she was like kind of commonplace in a lot of black households around the time her work being that her work was like heavily circulated. Much of it, she's not really making any money off of it. But she was like a major, um, she was like my first form of representation through art in my house. Um, and I think that she was supposed to be like a stand-in for me and my sisters, um, for my parents. Um, but in thinking about the shadow work, it, I think I was, that piece is a lot about um, like how to even represent myself or my family. Like what is the best way to go about making something that's really paying tribute to um, black culture or blackness or like what is, what's an acceptable means to do so? Is that a painting? Is that a photograph? Like these, it's paint brushes made out of photo film um, like it would rather be 120 film, 35 millimeter film. So it's just, it's just supposed to be like a physical realization of that object, um, of just this conflict of like how to go about representing ourselves or the ones we love. Um, uh, I guess thinking about um, kind of like the use of materials um, within the work as well. Um, prop for a real Lone Ranger um, really stands out to me, um, just considering the fact that, you know, um, I'm assuming the, you know, rocking horse that you're using is something that maybe is from childhood and then even maybe the quilt that's involved, but the use of like the zip ties um, and all of those things um, are just interesting. So um, I don't know if you maybe want to touch on that. Yeah, prop to uh, the real Lone Ranger, Ode to Bad Re Bass Reeves, is thinking about Bass Reeves like this old, um, like the rich, like a black, you know the R Lone Ranger movie. Uh, Bass Reeves was who the Lone Ranger was actually modeled off after. He was a black man, of course, he wasn't like, get, like they're not gonna make a Hollywood movie about a black cowboy. And that was just kind of weighing on my head, like with the resurgence of like the whole black cowboy imagery, um, whether it be from Beyonce to Nas X to Abro, whatever. So 
And I was kind of thinking about this. Yes, I, it has been in my life for um, since probably about six, six years old, seven years old or so. And this is kind of like my trusted Steve to like kind of go through, like ride um, through all my family history on to some degree. Um, um, and, and in creating the, the garment that he's wearing um, or in the zip ties was just also just like another marker for time for me kind of symbolizing like all the time put into like thinking about crafting my, my image or, or our image and then also like trying to give it I don't know I want it to seem like kind of give it like a spooky kind of scary feel because it's like thinking about the how pervasive the like whitewashing is um, I kind of wanted to take that back um, yeah and just give it a mask this was like my the veil for that I wanted for this piece um, also, kind of, since we're still on the topic of materials, um, you mentioned that you use a lot of like knickknacks and ha hand-me-downs. Um, and we were speaking earlier, like you said that um, horse has been in your life since you were like seven, you know. Um, and we were kind of like talking about the different, like how long a lot of these materials have been in your life, and then like shedding them kind of for the show. Um, so yeah, like thinking about um, fur coat and then even uh, black metal with the use of like the hand-me-down t-shirts that are kind of throughout the, um, that piece. Um, I guess kind of like, um, you know, how does that also kind of play into the concept of like the crawl space and like maybe shedding some of those things? The, the fur coat, fur coat, um even like it being in the closet there, it used to, it's a coat that used to belong to my grandmother. They didn't necessarily um, come through my hands until early last year when my grandmother dealing with dementia had to move out of her house. So we were able to go through a lot of her old goods. And like, I remember seeing this fur coat, like and images of her from like pre me being born, but I knew that she loved it and like she would hate to like have it thrown away so I was just trying to figure out a means of preserving it like though she might not think about this as preserving it but like for me it's so it's a way to make sure like it doesn't get destroyed but I'm also kind of offering it up to everyone else it's like no longer me nor her actually have ownership of it, it now that it's put into this space which I think I am still a little timid about which is why like I like throw it over there like in, in the closet almost um, but then thinking about the um, found materials and also being and found fabrics that are also in the black metal piece, uh, marks of worship. That one, it's like um, it's like a re repeating narrative of mine. I've made other black metal pieces in the past, like but they're all kind of thinking about um, the flesh and soil and rust and like melanated people and just it's kind of all, it all being kind of made up of like the same thing it's like yes yeah, think about our flesh but this one um, kind of thinking about like tattooing um, but then also it's it's a lot of concrete being there so just thinking about like manual labor the time spent breaking up concrete for me like even all the little like picking holes sledgehammer and stuff, but, um, and then it's, oh, it's also made of, like, all these, if you get up close to it, it's, like, some still legible uh, documents that are um, pulped up and, and injected into the hole. Um, so it, they just all bring, like, a, a energy and a time and place into the work for me that I, I think if I don't, without these objects, I don't really have a place to build on, or it doesn't feel like it, it feels like a losing cause for me if I try to touch on these points in my past without actually bringing the, the literal object into the work. Um, okay, um, I guess I'd love to kind of now touch on um, kind of some of the like religious um, kind of nods that are throughout the work. Um, I forget the piece the name of that piece but um black yeah black church um which is kind of this like uh fabric piece um 
as well as some of like the um, works on paper that nod to kind of like, um, I don't know, like this angel, like religious kind of narrative. Um, I'd love to kind of like talk for you to kind of elaborate on like what that means to you and um, in relation to, you know, the work in your own personal life. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of an inseparable part of my identity. Like whether I'm like religious now or not, I don't think it's really that relevant, but it's just, I was like brought up in like the Southern Baptist black church and I just think in a lot of even the like transcendental qualities of like that music and even like preaching, I, I feel like I try to tap into a lot like in producing abstraction, you know? Um, and these I'm even thinking about like some of the banners and it's, it's just like something that I can't escape. It's, it's just a part of me that um, if I like do well today, my mom will say it was because of God or something, you know what I mean? So, and partially I'm like, you're right, it is. For these reasons, maybe different than the reasons that she's dating, but. So yeah, it's just like, um, yeah, I just, I just, there's really like the way that we're able to like place faith. I think there's something essential there that I don't wanna um, lose in the objects that I make. Cool. Um, earlier we talked about um, the metaphor of memory um, and how that kind of like plays a part in some of the more like pulpy like works on paper. Um, for instance, like your self-portrait, um, portrait of an artist as a puddle of his former self, which is the smaller piece um, on this pillar. Um, and you're, you mentioned like, you know, the image transfers and um, kind of how that represents like the removal of people or like lineage, um, I'd love for you to elaborate that uh, on that more as well. Um, portrait of a, the artist as a, port, a puddle of his fun of, a, the portrait of an artist as a puddle of his former self. Sorry, <laughs> tongue twister, I, I can't, literally a puddle. But um, no, it's kind of like uh, thinking about the portrait of the artist as a shadow of his former self uh, by Carrie James Marshall, kind of like, an essential work of art in thinking about um, black representation in contemporary art. Um, so, and, and in that work, the work, artist kind of becomes like literally, it's like a black figure on a black background and it's kind of reduced down to like nothing besides like the essence of blackness. Um, and for me, in most of those paper pulp works, that one, uh, there, it was in my photo background, they're like thinking about um, taking all these old family photographs or documents, because that's what's being pulped down to make these sculptural um, objects, slabs. Um, it's, yeah, thinking about the photographic object, thinking about the blur, thinking about memory, thinking about memory failing us, you, me, I, like, as it, as it tends to. I'm trying to take them take the photographs as far, like, using them and reduce them down to their, their essence, like, but as far from their original state and their legibility, um, and just in a way that where people maybe don't necessarily really know what they look at, lo are looking at, or like they're assuming it as being less than, but there's actually all this contents and like generations of imagery that's like loaded um, into this thing that just reduced down to like color and shape. Um, so I don't, it's just like a, yeah, it's just, just thinking about the photographic object and like reducing it down to its essence. It's kind of where I'm at with those. Um, do you want to talk about any of the other ones? Like I personally really love um, Go Out, um, Go On Out, Go Out and Forget Where You Came From, which is that one in the back corner. Um, specifically because it's like the kind of like only noticeable thing is like the kind of like footprint um, piece maybe in the bottom left. Um, so yeah, I'd kind of love to know maybe like what of the, like what imagery came to like break down those pieces of pulp to be what it is that we see. Yeah, I mean with, that, that, that's kind of like the go on out and go out and get where you came from. Yeah. It's like thinking about these images no longer being visible in their, their initial state. Um, and just like this pursuit of 
necessarily or this thing that's like said is like a negative sense like oh like don't forget where you come from type thing so it, doing that but then I'm also like paying like reference to coming out the mud with like the black forces print in there like it's significant that that's the Air Force One print um, um, it's with that like it's significant that's the only legible thing um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of what I was, what, literally what I was just yeah. saying about all the paper pulps in general, but it's just trying to take this thing that was once, leg, once legible and then once you mash it together, it just um, interacts with the world in a whole different way. And I think that those works also, once again, tie into this conflict between whether to make um, a painting or a photograph, because then taking photographs and using them to make something that seems sculptural, but then kind of engages in this conversation of like minimalist painting to some degree. Um, you know, was, but also thinking about the, sorry, but no, go ahead. I think also it's important that like thinking about paint just as like another material and not like a, a means of building some illusion of make like these slabs of paint and then embedded them into the slab of paper. Um, just using it in another, like in the language of collage or the sensibilities of collage rather than um, trying to like render three dimensional space. Cool. Um, the audio is not playing right now, but I'd maybe love to touch on like the audio piece in relation to the Lone Ranger piece. I guess we probably should have talked about that when we were talking about Lone Ranger, but um, I'd love to maybe go back to it and um, yeah, just hear your thoughts on like how that was made because that was a collaborative piece. Um, yeah. I mean, the audio for Lone Ranger, Lone Ranger started off as, I, I made a video that hadn't really made it to the public eye yet, but it was, the audio was like supposed to be the soundtrack. Um, and that, and it was a collaboration between myself and my assistant. Uh, Zeke Robertson and Becca Rodriguez. Yeah, so it's just a mixture of like the audio of me like riding the toy rocking horse and just like their take on like a Western. Um, and that was blended in with another collaborative piece of mine, um, which is the audio for Crawl Space, um, which is by uh, an artist and producer, composer, friend of mine, Yesenia Rojas. And, and in that work, I just sent her audio from me, like, working in cross spaces over the last few years, old family images, garments, pretty much all of, like, my mood board for this, for this work, um, I sent to her, as well as um, Deacon Becca. And in, even thinking about, going back to my references of, like, the Black Church and music and the transcendental quality of music, Especially like music like that that's a little noisier or like abstract or more of a soundscape or nonlinear. Um, it's also inherently collaborative. Um, and I think in order for us to like really, in order for us to even dive into aspects of introspection or the transcendental, like it, it takes like a collective effort. Um, so yeah. Like collaboration is at the core part of me and you, uh, core, core part of my practice. And this audio doesn't exist without my collaborators. Um, but I think also, it, it, as much as it's reactionary for them, I'm also like making work based around the sound that they produce um, for the work. Cool. Um, I guess maybe before we open up to everyone, I'd love to maybe end with. Um, a question that you posed um, in your artist statement um, and is what is the best way to represent ourselves um, as black Americans or African Americans um, and like what is the representation of our history like um, yeah I guess like how do you feel about that based on you know the work that you're presenting within crawl space mm, for me I mean I feel good about like my position in that, because I feel like the best way to, I don't to just show up authentically, honestly, and in, in who you are, and I feel like that's the only way to really 
it's because who else is like asked to like describe their existence, explain their existence in that way? So I think part of like making work that's like ultimately like speaks to like Black American culture and blackness is just about us like standing strong and like who we are and how what we feel is a valid means of representing ourselves. And I think I was I was definitely trying to make things that were more packaged for this exhibition. Um, and I think I was trying to think about um, the photographic object in different ways. I think oftentimes I went away from the rectangle and rejected the rectangle um, through the forms of my work. Um, but in this one, I tried to do that and just highlight the photographic object through like making sculptural forms out of um, multiple photographs, but I, I think part of wanting to, part of, part of like wanting to have this work be more packaged or like have it better framed was wanted to feel a little more homey, like even in the sense of like maybe it's not even that it needs to be like ready to sell, but more so though it was like I wanted things to have like clear boundaries where I, I, I'm usually not that concerned. I want more of my work to fit into each other, but I think, yeah, I just wanted like different periods or almost like rooms in a house to be evident in some of this work. So I just wanted to give them their own space to be. Yep. Mm. I mean, I think it fit perfect for like the idea of a crawl space with like being in a basement. Um, but I think if anything, I, I feel like I've brought it, kind of reeled it in a little bit, you know what I mean? I f didn't make it as like site specific as I would like to. Not as I would like to, but that I have in the past. I did what I wanted to do and I'm really pleased at how this work turned out. So I, I did like slight interventions in like how people move around the space, but overall this was kind of, <clears throat> overall I didn't really think too much about the space until I was here. Um, I try not to let it really cloud my vision of the work. Because the work isn't, yeah, it's not supposed to be like a, a site specific installation. It's more so like I'm bringing these objects from various times, periods, and placing them. A lot of that, I think there's also, I'm going to approach this two different ways. A lot of the work here is definitely like comes from pulling from the archives that my mom, my grandmother, my aunt, so whoever was who yielded the camera at those times. Completely created my entire lens in which to look back on like my opinion. But I think about the shadow work in this acknowledgement of like, though when I'm thinking about like abstraction and like introspection and like trying to pull out, the, the, like pull myself out into work and just like almost. You, an acknowledgement of like the amount of disrespect that's going on in there for me to even make the statement that like I'm just channeling myself. I'm channeling like in channeling something deeper, in channeling something deep within me, I'm actually just channeling like ancestors and people before me. So like yeah, I'm more so exactly what you're saying. That's that's where it's coming from for me. Um, and that's also where like the crawl space metaphor, like thinking about that, thinking about the upbringing and like the thinking about the foundation being more important than the house, you know, simple, like, yeah, so just kind of highlighting that foundation. Like that one, like the color, the memory consolidation in red, like the use of reds in the title, because also just thinking about like, not only like my blood, but then like thinking about red, think about rage, you think about stop, like, um, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, it's kind of thinking about, I guess, in the same way that, like, yeah, it's like this tiptoeing around it, you know what I mean? Like, using it as, yeah, it's like a, it's, you, you, the crawl space being a place where you, like, hide all this thing, but then has, like, the, yeah, essential infrastructure. Um, that's really what I'm touching on. But for me, it's personally, I'm like just working through 
yeah, you know, not really even like specific generational traumas, but being able to like using the objects as the platform to even be able to like start to have these conversations with my family or elsewhere, you know what I mean? Like, um, so yeah, it's like, it's like, for me, I think less about, I mean, well, there's like old so like this is a piece for like uh, that brother of mine, but like, so it's like points like that, but more so just thinking about just trying to find ways to have more conversations around like mental health and things like that in like black community. I will say like this show for me is like super almost like nostalgic because there's like little things that are represented throughout all of the different pieces that like I can personally kind of like you know you like take back and kind of remember or think about like my only my own family history like the quilts um, on Lone Ranger and just like some of the imagery that's throughout so um, yeah, like that's, I feel like that's a really great question is like think, like just thinking about even the conversation of tr generational trauma, specifically when it comes to like, you know, black people and African Americans is like super hard in general. So, yeah, I, um, I think you made a really good point in the like, sometimes it's like hard, to, it's hard for them that it's the person, the people that are holding that trauma, sometimes it's hard to let that out and like is it should you expect them to let it out like what does it put someone through to actually have to unearth that you know what I mean so it's so that's why like rather than like pushing it but like rather than trying to pull it push it out of someone just like creating steps or different lenses or different paths into that conversation while also I think that there's like a it's, it's, it's like also tied to like ideas of representation for me, you know what I mean? Like, like do, do, you, do I have to be like re rendered in like full realism in order for me to like, in order for you to see me, you know what I mean? Do I have to tell you my entire background in order for you to give me some, some sense of grace, you know what I mean? So yeah, like that, I feel like that's overall like what I'm trying to get at here and like it makes you feel good that like people feel seen in the work, but it's also like with that, like I'm not, I don't want anyone to, like in touching on nostalgia, work's gonna be inherently triggering too, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, which is, which, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's just a rough, like a downside of it, but also maybe like essential to that process. As any, so, yeah, thanks Caleb. Bye.